Hi, welcome to Gilboy's YouTube channel. In this video, I want to show you some of the wood finishes that we have here at Gilboy's. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. It's just really what I've got in the store cupboards here. Uh, and I know quite a few people are asking me about different wood finishes. So what I'm gonna do is go through each one, hopefully quite quickly. I'll talk about the product, what its benefits are, and also we're gonna apply it and then tomorrow, we're gonna put the second coat on. So this is sort of time relevant because I know that you know many hobbyists are watching this video and often it's all about the time of drying times that are coming to these sorts of things. So let's get on. This is straight out of my cupboard, out of the workshop cupboards here. Again, it's not exhaustive, um, but we'll have a list. So I'll just crack on. So the first one we have on our list is tungor so it's no particular order it's a natural wood finish made from nuts from china not chinese nuts but there's some nuts okay <laughs> it's child proof oh, i need to go to the gym you need to work out more mister There it is, there it is. So it's quite a thick, quite a thick oil. It's quite yellow. Um, it says to, to brush it on. Just clean the dust out of there. Now I've got samples of oak this is veneered MDF, and they're all sanded up to 240, 240 grit. So I know you can dilute the first coat. For better penetration. It does say that on the, the can. brush here and there. So it brushes on easy. So I'm going to leave that for 15 or 20 minutes to soak in. Now I'm going to wipe off the excess. So I'll just leave that there. Next one is French polish or shellac. Um, this is what we use in the workshop here. This is a translucent Translucent, it's transparent polish. This is transparent polish or extra pale or special pale polish. It's the clear, it's got a slight bit of yellowness to the shellac. Now shellac, as you can see, that's quite thin, it's quite watery. I mean, this shellac comes from the lac beetle, that's where the, this is diluted with methylated spirits and other carriers in there, but I mean this is this dates back to the eighteen hundreds and before, and it's French polish. This is what we use to French polish furniture with. Now in this instance, I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to brush on French polish. You can use a fad. Normally you'd use a fad or a polisher's mop to apply the polish. Okay. Now this is linseed oil. You see it's quite viscous, it's boiled linseed as opposed to raw linseed. So it's it's got a chemical dryer in there. Um, linseed oil has been around for a long, long time and it's the base of a lot of wood finishes, certainly paints uh, and, um, and clear coat finishes for wood for, for centuries. Now 
Now with the linseed oil, I probably will do the same as I was gonna do for the tongue oil. We'll leave it on in there for 20 minutes and just wipe off the excess. Otherwise it's gonna take a long time to dry. So the workshop temperature at the moment, you see it's quite warm. It's nearly 20 degrees. It's probably the warmest it's been this year. And the humidity is quite low as well. Um, so the conditions for doing this are, are perfect really. And I would expect drying times to be that much quicker than it would be if it was cooler temperatures and higher humidity and also different wood substrates. So it really is just an example of what's happening here at this time. Next on our list is a, a polyester lacquer. Now this is a, a sprayed on application uh, of this finish. Um, I'm not gonna open it and do it now because what you do need to be wearing is a full spray mask with a visor, um, it needs to be in a spray booth with extraction. Um, so you need a lot of equipment for this, uh, which we do have, but I'm not setting it up to do that just to open. Once this is opened, it will start drying off. And to be honest with you, I've had this for years and years and years. Um, it's probably out of date, but it's that sort of finish that's a, a piano, you know, the really glossy piano finishes. And sometimes you see it on furniture uh, the Italian furniture of the 80s and 90s used to have it on there. It's a, it's a really thick lacquer, polyester lacquer, that actually when you hit it with something hard, it will shatter and fracture like you're on a windscreen. It's really, really tough stuff, but not really something you'd apply at home. The next one is one of my favourites. And I've been talking about this for years and years, and it's hard wax oils. Now a hard wax oil is a combination of many of the things you can see here really. Um, it has probably got tongue oil in it, linseed oil, lots of natural wood oils in there and beeswax. And there's many different recipes of it. Um, I'm talking louder and louder because of the, of the steam train. <laughs> Now there are, any, <laughs> there are many varieties, uh, or, or varieties, there are many brands of hard wax oil out there. Um, you may know some of them as, these are all from the workshop which you've had for years, Rubio Monocoat, um, Osmo Oil, there is Tretex, I think Fiddies do one as well. Uh, there are lots out there and we now have our own hard wax oil uh, which I'll now demonstrate and apply some to a piece of oak. So this has a sort of a linseed orangey scent to it. Um, we'll leave that on there just briefly and then we'll wipe off the excess as well. Next one is beeswax polish. For this, I'm gonna use our pure gold, which is a clear beeswax polish. I'm not gonna use wire wool, which is what I normally talk about applying it with because we're gonna apply it to bare wood. Next one we've got is a polyurethane varnish. Now, I think this is an oil-based one. You can get water-based ones. So this is an interior polyurethane varnish that's been around for, for decades, really. This is a new tin of polyurethane varnish. It's a satin one. And I can feel in the bottom of the tin, the matting agent is settled. 
it settled down there and it was quite lumpy. So it's really important to stir the tin. Again, if you were applying this varnish at home, I recommend thinning it 10% with some white spirit, if you're oil-based one or the whatever the recommended thinner is, the carrier, just so it penetrates deeper into the wood, like a primer, like a wood primer is like a traditional primer. Um, it just helps bond to the wood better. Our next one is um, sand in sealer. Now we use this a lot um, in the workshop as a general wood sealer. Um, it hasn't got great properties really. It's there to dry really quickly and as it's sort of suggested, it's a sanding sealer. So there's the, the sort of main body that, of the, the sanding sealer here, uh, the solids. And there's the sort of, I suppose that must be a shellac here because it dries quick. I'll just shake it up because this is a shaky one. We needed to work out. <laughs> there are a lot of solids content in there. It's got quite a strong aroma. It's quite solventy. Uh, but out of the sanding sealers, this is a shellac based one, which I prefer to a cellulose based one. You know, that lacquer thinner, the cellulose, which is a really strong solvent, whereas methylated spirit's not so bad. Um, I expect that sanding sealer will dry in about, in this temperature in here, probably in about 15 minutes. Tea coil's the next one um, for exterior furniture. It says here for interior and exterior use, the original oil that enhances the natural beauty of all woods and veneers, leaving attractive low gloss finish. hasn't got a very pleasant smell. That does smell almost petrochemically, really. And it's quite dark, isn't it? Gosh. It's very, very thin. It really is very, very oily. Again, I'll come back in a minute, leave that 10, 15 minutes, and I'll wipe off the excess to make it fair comparison. Danish oil. Now I see lots of people use this. Just not you. Just not me. Danish oil really is a combination, as I, from my memory, um, of linseed oil and tongue oil combined together to give you Danish oil. Again, with uh, added dryers in there. Smells very linseedy. It's got a quite a strong linseed. It smells like traditional paint again. The next one we're going to do is, well, it's, it's mineral oil, really, which is, um, it's not really a wood finish, but I do see people talking about it. We have some here from, from years ago that has orange oil in it, um, so it's sort of scented, so it smells really nice, and we use it sometimes to wipe inside cupboards or cabinets that are, sometimes have a musty smell in them.
One thing about using cloths, if you do use any cloths for applying oils or wiping off oils, wiping on anything containing oil-based finishes, make sure that you unfold the cloth afterwards and dispose of it. Because if you leave them scrunched, scrunched up, there is a chance that they can spontaneously combust, combust and it does happen. Unlikely just one little cloth, but if you've got multiple cloths, it might well do. But just to be on the safe side, just always, when you dispose of them, just make sure they're all loose. I just make, just get them outside really. Okay, the last one on our list, again, is a bit like the polyester lacquer here, is the sprayed finishes. Now the sprayed finishes can be things like uh, pre-catalyzed lacquer, some of the times before it was called nitrocellulose lacquer, two-pack melamine AC lacquers. Uh, there's any amount of them out there now. There's a lot of waterborne lacquers. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I don't really expect you to have um, a spray system where you have compressors and extraction at home. So this is what this is for. Okay, so you see me apply all those varying finishes to the same piece of wood. It was a uh, oak veneered MDF. We'll come back tomorrow morning. Hopefully the train won't get in the way of our filming. Um, we'll carry on the next post, the second coat. And we'll also talk about the properties and the benefits of each one of these finishes. Just as we, we were talking there, just before we go to filming tomorrow, and I thought, oh, the sanding CD, you just saw me do it. It's ready to sand, and that is 15 minutes. And just to show you that here's the, the Danish oil, still very much wet that I've just wiped. But that sanding sealer dries so quickly. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Right, this is day two, nearly 24 hours later. So not the next morning. And right, so look at our sample. So tongue oil. You can see how it's absorbed into the wood there. It's gone slightly darker, or the appearance of slightly darkening the wood. And in the grain, it's still wet. It hasn't dried. It's still, even after me wiping off the excess, it still hasn't dried. So I can't do anything with that. That has to wait till possibly the next day or even days later before you can put another coat on it. So it's not very practical as a finish given that the temperature again today is 19 and a half degrees and humidity is 50%. So it's really, it's quite dry, really. Um, so you need a lot of time for this uh, tongue oil. Uh, it says interior. I always thought tongue oil was an exterior finish. So as far as I was concerned, actually tongue oil is an exterior wood finish as well but you're gonna need a lot of coats. And I have used this before on exterior furniture and you are gonna put a lot of coats. It's gonna take a long time to build up a finish. It's not a quick um, product to apply and achieve a finish with. Uh, and it's not particularly great when it comes to interior woodwork. If you want to put hot cups off of wear, you know, tea, coffee, spillages, um, and general wear, it's, it's not that great. French polish. I brushed that on. I used a mop, mopped it on. That's dry. You can see it's already got a sheen. So French polish is all that shellac. It's all nice and shiny. Um, that I would cut back with some 320 in a minute. And then I'm going to put some fads of polish over it. Um, French polish. There's no point in me talking about French polish. Take a look at the video that I have on YouTube. I'll put the link in up here uh, for you to go to. There's a whole series of videos all about French polishing and French polish finishes. Beautiful at enhancing the wood. It's a shiny, glossy, film coated finish. But practicalities wise, uh, for something you want to get, again, using like a dining table where you'll put things on, French polish is not the best at all. So uh, have a look at that link. Linseed oil the go-to finish for, for many people for years and years and years. It's centuries, years old, really. Oh, look. It's still not dry. Even after me wiping it clear, 
that's still not dry on there. And that is boiled linseed oil as well, because you get raw, which wouldn't have been dry at all. This is the one that should dry quicker. Uh, uh, and it hasn't really, not really considering the temperature. So again, as a practical finish, there. We wouldn't use this really in the woodworking uh, workshop too much, unless you've got a project you're going to, you know, extend for days on end because you want a linseed oil finish. And all these oil-based coatings, they penetrate deep into, into the wood. They, they really get soaked and absorbed in. Um, so there's not much of a film coating at all. So none of these are film coating, apart from the French polish, obviously. The polyester lacquer, we're not worried about that. We're not going to deal with that. Hard wax oil. Right, here we go. So this, bone dry, absolutely bone dry. In fact, it was bone dry when I left the workshop last night. Um, really, I, I left quite late last night and it was, I'd say bone dry, but it near enough was because the temperature's so good. So we're gonna lightly cut this back and give it another coat of hard wax oil. Um, now this stuff is brilliant. <laughs> it really is. We'll talk a little bit more about this tomorrow when I've gone through the final sort of rundown once we put all the coats on. But this stuff is fantastic. Beeswax polish. This is our beeswax polish that I put on there. You can see how it's hardly darkened the wood at all. Initially when I applied it, it darkened the pure turpentine, the natural pine turpentine. That's where the turpentine comes from, pine trees. had soaked into the wood or been absorbed part of it, some it evaporated away. Um, you can see the slight difference in the finish there. It's it's a lovely finish, so we could build, put another wax, you get a lovely waxy finish, but as a practical finish, it's rubbish. <laughs> In all honesty, it's, it's rubbish. You, it, 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 aesthetics, yes, because it keeps the wood nice and light, and I know that's really, really popular at the moment. Uh, I get asked about it so many times. Oh, I want the wood to look like it is there, which is just raw, sanded wood. It's virtually impossible. I mean, the hard wax oil is pretty close to it. If you look at the other ones that are here, the linseed oil, the tongue oil, even the French polish, these are all darker. I don't know how well that comes out of the camera. These are all darker compared to the hard wax oil, which has lightened as it's dried, and the beeswax polish. I mean, our beeswax polish is brilliant, but I would never ever recommend it as a wood surface treatment unless it's aesthetically talking about. Right, move on, polyurethane varnish. Now this is a varnish, this is a coating. This is, this is dried overnight, even though it's quite thick, because it is so warm in here. But you can see what it's done here. It's, there's a film coating over the surface. You can see the grain. I mean, it's, it's a nice finish. It's been a popular go-to choice, for again, for decades. But you are coating the wood. You're not gonna get a natural finish with this, as like the polyester finishes and the lacquered finishes. There's nothing natural about it. You're a film coating over the wood. Uh, it's far less popular these days. Although I'll cut this back and give it another coat. Sanding sealer. Sanding sealer, that was dry within about 15 minutes. Brilliant stuff. Again, completely impractical when it comes to using it on heat treated surfaces, or heat treated, uh, hot surfaces and general wear and tear. Um, you can wax over that. And again, an aesthetic point of view, it will look lovely, but that's about it. Uh, teak oil. Uh, again, I use teak on exterior furniture. That penetrated deep into the surface and it's still oily. That's not dried. It's, it's dried quite well, but it's still, you can't really, you could put another coat on it, I suppose now, but I'll leave that till tomorrow. Danish oil. Again, a very popular choice for woodworkers. This is still oily here. Parts of it have dried quite well. But again, it's penetrated deep into the surface of the wood. And our mineral oil or orange oil here, which has darkened it. And to be fair, that has dried on there quite well but it's gonna give you no protection whatsoever. You're not giving any protection with that at all. It's just darkened the wood. Uh, it's not gonna give you anything. 
You often hear about mineral oil and oil-based polishes. I've seen this before many times on YouTube and especially in America, I believe, using oil-based um, wax polishes for their furniture. Don't do it. You're putting oil onto a pre-finished furniture. It's going to do no good whatsoever. And if there's cracks um, or splint, not splinters, but if the finish is degraded in any way and, and there are areas where the oil can creep in underneath that finish, you're in big trouble. So, I mean, I, I don't really quite know what purpose that serves, apart from what I was talking about earlier on um, yesterday, which was the, you know, for the nice aroma. Mineral oil, it, it's just a carrier and it, it's not a finish at all and certainly shouldn't be really in any wax polishes in great content because it's just not going to dry. It's a non-drying oil. Uh, and then we've got the lacquer. We won't worry about the lacquered finish. So, right, we're going to move on. I'm going to do some light sanding. I'm going to recoat the ones that I can recoat, which is a few of them. And then we'll come back tomorrow morning and have a look at all these finishes and discuss maybe a little bit more detail about the benefits of using one or not. You can see it's clogged the paper. French polish doesn't sand very well. Uh, it doesn't like being sanded. Hard wax oil. Even now straight away, I can tell that's sanding. That's doing a nice job gently cutting back so there is a slight film to it ever so slight so it's really easy that's a quick cut back i'm going to wipe out the dust out of the grain that's that one done beeswax polish i'm not going to sand polyurethane varnish will sand now this is going to be quite tough. Again, polyurethane, um, unless it's dried, properly dried, really dried well, it tends to clog up your um, dry sandpaper. You can use wet and dry sandpaper to sand it. So sanding it with wet and dry with water and a bit of soap. Sanding sealer. Well, this should be easy, shouldn't it? Well, it's going to be. Just the nearest touch of the paper and it just sands. The danger is with sanding sealer is you go straight through. There you are. Sanding sealer done. Teak oil I'm not going to sand. Danish oil I'm not going to sand. Orange oil I can't sand. And that was with one little piece of 320 grit. I wouldn't go much more than 320. Anything else that's coarser than 320 or something like that. Danger of cutting through it, especially if it was um, slightly soft. <laughs> So day three, we started this on Wednesday. It's now Friday afternoon. And let's have a look at our wood finishes. The tongue oil, that's that, still that first white application and it's still not dry. So limited uses really, tongue oil, in my opinion. Bear in mind, this is just my opinion for, for all of this what we're assessing here. I'm sure other people will have other experiences. French polish, there's a lovely French polished finish. 
I've just put placed a few fads over this, so it's by no means rubbered up, up to a nice big finish, but you can see it's quite shiny and it's brought out the color of the oak. Um, I love French polish finishes. I think they're fantastic. Linseed oil. Still not dry. Again, I, I mean, you can, I could recoat that, but it's still not dry. Even that's uh, boiled as well. Hard wax oil. Dry. Absolutely perfect. Beeswax polish. So this is just the beeswax polish I put on there. I gave it a few other coats actually. Um, let's give it a buff. I'm going to catch that in the light if I buff it. Uh, so the beeswax, I mean, that's a lovely finish, isn't it? There's hardly any change from the natural wood there. And there's a lovely soft sheen. Um, I do like a, a natural wax finish. The problem is, it's completely impractical. It's aesthetically pleasing, but it's like a chocolate teapot, really. I mean, you can't really do anything with it. You can't place anything on it. Even with our really good pure gold there, with all that carnauba and miracle wax and the beeswax in there for long-term protection or for putting um, hot tea or coffee or spills things, it will more than likely mark. I mean, it will give you some sort of time to, to clean it off, but not very long. Polyurethane varnish. God, this stuff has been around for, for donkey's years. Um, <laughs> it's the go-to for many. I mean, it's okay. It's got bits in it. It's a really thick film coating. I, I, we, we don't really use it in here uh, for anything. It, it's too it's too old fashioned, I suppose, is what I'm saying. Sanding sealer. The sanding sealer I sanded and I gave it a, an application of our pure gold. I wax polished it just and there you go. And that also is one up, really, from the beeswax on its own, our pure gold. That's the sanding sealer one. And it gives a lovely, smooth feel. You can still feel the grain of the wood. But again, not really a practical finish. It looks good, but it won't be very practical. So again, it's something you're looking at and not touching not using it's fine teak oil for exterior furniture that has actually just about dried um, but the thing is with these oils is they penetrate deep into the wood um, so you're going to need many many coats so it's going to take you a good while to get a finish danish oil the same again it's dried, it's dried patchy really. Maybe, maybe I didn't wipe it evenly. But that's okay. Um, again, you're gonna build up lots and lots of coats on that. It's an okay wood finish. And the orange oil or the mineral oil finish, that's gonna give you no protection whatsoever. It's soaked into the surface there. And it, actually it has, it seems to have dried, but it's not going to offer you anything it's just been absorbed by the wood i mean you could wax that i suppose on top so it's a bit like a, a sanding sealer but it takes a long time to dry so i think obviously we've got the lacquered finishes so we've got the spray lacquer like melamine coated the uh pre-catalyzed finishes and also you've got the polyester lacquer those thick high gloss finishes like you get on a piano uh, my favourite, I think most of you know my favourite really, they actually are two favourites. I really like the French polish finish, but for you out there who have not been trained as a French polisher as I have over four years of doing apprenticeship, it's really, really hard to replicate the French polish finish just by watching a video or giving it a go. By all means do, but it's, it's not an easy finish to do. The best one 
And I've been saying about these for years. And I know we've got our own there, but I'm not talking about the fact that we've got our own, I what it is, it's, it's really, really good. But hard wax oils, they are fantastic. They really are good. I mean, look at that. I placed the first coat on that and it was draw, drying within sort of four to six hours because it's lovely and warm in here. I coated this and I normally wipe off the excess and I didn't. And I did this yesterday, Thursday, today, Friday, and it's lovely and hard. And the benefits of using a hard wax oil, I mean, look, it's giving you a lovely soft satin sheen. You can still feel the grain. It hasn't soaked deep into the wood. It's the, the hard wax oil's just bonded with the surface there and, and started to dry. It's heat resistant, it's water resistant, it's abrasive resistant. You can use it on a floor. It's great for floors, it's great for doors, it's great for handrails, stairs, treads. It's slip resistant. It's really easy to apply. You don't need to have an apprenticeship in French polishing to apply a hard wax oil. It's such good stuff. I love it. I genuinely, absolutely love it. I've been taking so long, and I get tongue tied with it because I'm so excited by the stuff. I think it's brilliant. And I talk, and I say this as a professional as well. It's, it's in my professional capacity. I think hard wax oils. I'm gonna get to the train. <laughs> These hard wax oils. I, I, what I don't understand is why you'd even bother with a teak oil, or a Danish oil, or a mineral oil, or a tongue oil, or a linseed. Forget them. Why? Why would you bother when you've got? A fantastic product that does all of the things that you want these Danish oils and teak oils and tongue oils to do. It's all in there. It's all in a hard wax oil. And it dries quickly. I don't know what else you'd want from a finish. The other thing it does is it leaves the wood surface looking quite natural. It hasn't got the big film and build up of this big shiny polyurethane where it's all plasticky, all the lacquers. You don't need all the skills. It's wipe it on, brush it, roll it, wipe it. As long as you don't put too much on, it will work for you. I think it is an absolutely fantastic finish. Um, I do hear, I know I'm on a rant, but I do watch these some of these YouTube YouTubers and different woodworking shops uh, making up their own recipe. And you think, well, they're using Danish soil, and then they put in maybe 50 mil, it's sort of 10 to one with a bit of polyurethane varnish. And then they put some tongue oil in and they might put something else in it. Well, that's what a hard wax oil is. <laughs> Why are you doing that? You must buy this stuff and it will do everything you want it to and look great and give you a professional looking finish. I promise you. So in conclusion, Hard wax oil is the way forward. Unless you're restoring a period piece of furniture that dates two or three hundred years, then don't be putting a hard wax oil and use a French polishes a French polishing, but then you'd go to an antique restorer. Um, I've just written an article about actually using hard wax oil on antiques. And I don't mean really expensive antiques, I mean the antiques have dropped in value that people you can't even sell at auction. Instead of using sanding sealers or um, polyurethanes or wipe on polys, whatever you, why don't you use a hard wax oil? It makes perfect sense. You can just wax over the top of this. I'll wax this. I tell you what, I'm going to wax this sample now with a bit of our, maybe let's put a bit of antique gold on there and you can see the finish, what it would look like to give you a really practical, serviceable piece of furniture that also looks great. I'll do that now.
so look at that now as an antique finish. That's two coats of hard wax oil and a wax polish. The antique oak, or antique gold, antique oak, antique gold has an oaky colour to it, which has highlighted the grain there a little bit more. You could use the pure gold or the rose gold, pure gold having no colour in it. But that's now giving it a soft antique look. That's what it was before. Two coats of hard wax oil with antique gold wax polish on there and the difference between the two. This, the great thing about this is now, unlike French polish, this is going to be hard wearing. This makes antique furniture or old furniture, reclaimed furniture, really usable as utilitarian. And one other thing that I hadn't uh, mentioned whilst we were going along this line of products were the volatile contents. I mean, look at this, the Danish oil here has a lot of things in there, so it's quite hazardous. The varnish has loads of hazard warnings on it. The teak oil, flammable, danger to health, very high VOC. The sanding sealer, there's a whole host of them there. Um, the polyester lacquer, well, that's got so many, it's unbelievable. Tile oil hasn't, I don't think there's anything in that. But look, our hard wax oil, no chemicals, no harmful solvents. So it's food friendly. You can use this on kitchen worktops. Um, you can use it anywhere where there's food around. Obviously, once it's dried, you don't drink it. It is a fantastic product. So, and I know I said it a second ago, but why would you bother with the rest of them? Just use a hard wax oil, knowing that you're going to get a wonderful finish and it's going to give you long-term use. And the other thing about hard wax oil, yet again, I've just thought of another one, was, okay, the polyurethane varnish. If there is a mark or something on the floor where you've used your polyurethane, you can't spot repair it. Whereas with this hard wax oil, you can spot repair. So if there is a worn area, say on a floor, on a table, on your kitchen work surface, you just lightly sand that area and give it another coat of hard wax oil in that area and it will blend in. You don't need to strip the whole thing. I know I bang on about it, but I'd like to see an argument why you wouldn't use it. Because uh, it is it's something I wish I had when I was 16, 17, learning my apprenticeship. Um, we wouldn't be using all those lacquers. We'll be using a nice hard wax oil. It's just, it's brilliant stuff. So I hope this has been useful for you. I know there are other finishes out there, but this is the majority of finishes that you're going to find that you can buy off the shelf for, for most woodworkers. woodworkers. Um, I really love the French polish finish. I really love the beeswax finish, which gives you virtually no colour change, but there's no protection with that. This is my go-to finish, the hard wax oil. Um, I know I've darkened it now by using that antique gold, but look at that for a finish, isn't that fantastic? So uh, go out and get some hard wax oil. Ours, because it's brilliant.